I had been on another movie with um, a wonderful makeup designer called Jaquetta Levin, and she was already booked to do the Serpent Queen. So she would be doing my hair and makeup in the morning and I would you'd be hearing about this, the Serpent Queen. And every morning I'd be like, oh, and I would be making suggestions about what actresses maybe should go up for the role and people I knew. And, and, and I remember kind of, yeah, there was at one point, I, I don't know if they were gonna cast somebody that could play younger and older or, you know, there was, anyway, I was just mm-hmm. listening to, to this fantastic kind of, about this fantastic show and the history. And then I started kind of Wikipediaing and Googling and like, oh, she's amazing. And then recommending really good friends of mine for the role who were quite a lot younger than me, but I thought that they would be great as Catherine. And as far as I was aware, they hadn't cast it by the time I'd finished that movie. And then I went home and I never thought about myself really at at that point, because it was, I think at that point they were going for one person to play younger and older. Um, And I, I think secretly deep down, I thought, well, if they go older, maybe, maybe I'll get a look in, I don't know. And um, yeah, sure enough, I went home and I had like a week off or something. And then I got a call from my manager saying, there are these scripts coming your way and have a read and tell me what you think. And I was like, I know all about the Serpent Queen. I've been hearing about it. And um, yeah, so I was really excited to to get the scripts and to speak with Erwin uh, Staff and Justin Haith and Stacey Passon and, and hope that my interpretation, what I thought when I read the scripts would... Uh, would uh, be enough to kind of would work for them and that the role would go my way so I was really really chuffed really honored I when I read the book I was struck by the uh, fact that this seemed to be a a very modern character but uh, in the sense that she was essentially a a pragmatist and a survivor uh, a uh, a survivor Um, but also that she was a classic anti-hero um, in the guise of Michael Corleone or Tony Soprano or Walter White, who happened also to be a woman. Um, and, and all that seemed right uh, to, to, for a long form television show. I think I'd, the way I've done it forever really is you just, you find the person by being them in the moment. You do as much prep as you can for a role in regards to, for this, listening to the book by Leone, uh, as Fried, uh, Leone Frieda, who um, wrote the book about Catherine de' Medici, which this mm. Serpent Queen is based on. Yeah. Um, listening to that and, and then trying to kind of work her out a little bit. And I think, I don't know for yourself, Eric, but sometimes when you read a really good book, you have a good sense of the character. You can just see them almost in your mind's eye and how they move, how they walk and... And then sometimes I suppose when you then go and watch, if they make a movie of the book that you love, you're like, they cast who in that, you know, like that doesn't, why did they, oh my gosh. You know, it, there's sometimes a bit of that. So for me, I get the lucky bit of falling in love with a character and knowing them really well from the literature. And then I get to act out what goes on in my head. So it's all just mm-hmm. up here really, um, instinct. Um, yeah, and, and having fantastic scripts. I think just being in those locations, the real locations, the real Chambord, the real Chenonceau, in our costumes that Karen Muller Sereau designed and made, they were just extraordinary. You, I just, my breath would be taken away because here we were in these real places, in these real clothes, places that Catherine had really been and touched in the walls and the trees that were older than the building. So she must have seen those trees and, you know, just kind of absorbing the reality really. So every day when we were on location, I found astonishing and just would pinch myself. Wow. Um, I I don't know if I can tell you a favorite scene. Um, There's a couple of uh, standout scenes that, that, um, there's a scene where, where um, a character from history, Pierre Marquez, comes to the royal court and, and warns the royal family that if people don't think they have a chance to make it on their own, if, if, if he basically says, 
the French Revolution is coming. He's just a couple hundred years early and uh, has his throat slit for speaking his truth. Um, that's a scene I, 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 I think about a lot because it seemed uh, a, a, something very contemporary about it. The warning he gives is if, if, if a hardworking person doesn't feel they can make it here, you're gonna have trouble. Uh, and that seems a, a relevant speech today. Yeah, true. What was the greatest challenge in the cinematic uh, realization of this project? Well, I can give you a, a, a simple and probably uninteresting answer, and that would be COVID, because we shot it in the middle of COVID, <laughs> and it was absurd and, and incredible. Um, we had this absolutely extraordinary French crew and an incredible cast, and, and it really had to become a family in order to get through this, in order to keep each other safe, in order to achieve what we had to achieve under this extraordinary pressure. Um, I would say that was the biggest challenge. I would say filmically, the biggest challenge was achieving what I wanted to achieve, which was to make this show very immediate, to bring the uh, characters very close to an audience, to make them very modern and comprehensible without undermining the stakes of the day. Because I think that if it's too anachronistic, then you don't worry about what the actors, what the characters are worrying about, meaning the king's favor, disease, religion. You, 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 we had, so that was the balance to walk. Well, I mean, Chateau Chambou, I mean, Chateau Chenonceau is, is, you know, the most beautiful house you've seen. Chateau Chambourg is utterly absurd in its scale and grandeur. Um, and shooting in those places really revealed a lot about the people of the day, why they built these things, how they lived, um, uh, the vastness of them, the, the kind of the importance of pomp and circumstance. I mean, how do you convince somebody that God picked you to be king? You know, you build a huge castle. Um, that's part of the, it's part of the marketing. Uh, and, and that became very clear. My story begins when I was a young girl. I was alone in the world. My first impression of my fellow man was less than favorable. It doesn't matter what you want. Your marriage has been arranged. France accepts Catherine de' Medici in marriage with Henry, Duke of Orléans. Then something terrible happened. I fell in love. But I was wrong. Do you know what I learned that day? Never trust a single soul. It was my time to govern. The only way I knew how. Perhaps if we gave him the proper incentive, he would tell us the truth. Cut off his finger. What? what? No! No! Catherine has a magician. He has lured her over to the dark arts. Drink. You were cold, possessed of the black heart, just as they say. Sometimes it feels like I can make things happen if I want them badly enough. <gasps> if you don't teach your enemies a lesson, and I'll never learn. When you find life conspiring against you, you must change it to your favor, no matter what the cost. Are you with me? I am with you. None of us are safe. You have a serpent in your midst. Feels good to be bad. Victor Sting.